Hey guys, Davin here at brewbits.com. Today I thought I would go through with you some of the cleaners and sterilizers that we've got available on our website and the pros and cons of uh, each type um, and also some ways in which they're very, very useful and some which won't do other things that some others will, if you see what I mean. Anyway, so let's start off with um, this one, which is sodium metabisulfate. So, and also Camden tablets, because they're basically the same thing. A Camden tablet is being pressed sodium metabisulfate into a tablet form, so you get a prescribed amount. Um, 10 of those is effectively the same as one teaspoon of this. So, sodium metabisulfate, um, it doesn't actually kill yeast, uh, it doesn't actually kill bacteria, I should say. What it does do is it stops them from multiplying. And it has a period that it's effective for, and after that period, the yeast and bacteria can actually start multiplying again. Um, but it does a couple of other different things. Very, very good if you're wanting to use it at the beginning of fermentation. Um, because what it does, as I say, is it stops those uh, bacteria from multiplying. And so what it does do is it gives time for any yeast that you've uh, pitched into your brew to actually start creating alcohol. And then that alcohol, because this has had the effect on the yeast and bacteria that you want to get rid of, uh, can then kill them. So it's the alcohol that does the killing, not the sodium metabisulfate. Um, Downside to this though, it has a very, very, very strong um, smell. And that smell is quite bad and dangerous because when it starts working, it lets off sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide is great, it's heavy, it sits on top of your wine or your beer right at the beginning, and it will create a layer that bugs and nasties can't get through. Um, the way it works, that layer, that sulfur dioxide, is by working on the mucous membranes. And as soon as it touches the mucous membranes, that sulfur dioxide turns to sulfuric acid. And we all know what sulfuric acid is. It's what you get in batteries and stuff like that. Um, and if you get that inside of you with big deep breath, it will work on your lungs and you'll get sulfuric acid in your lungs and you'll be choking and coughing and coughing. So you have to use this in a really well ventilated area. Okay. So that is sodium metabisulfate. These guys here I've put into a column because they've all got a very, very similar uh, property. They all work in a very, very similar way because they've got something in them called troclazine sodium, which basically is a um, chemical that they use in bleach. And so when you open these and use them, they have a very bleachy smell. So. They also are very, very good if you've got a filthy, dirty bucket or um, keg. Um, you can make up a teaspoon of this into a litre um, and use it to clean a steriliser. But as I say, if you've got a really, really dirty keg, what you can do is a teaspoon per litre and then fill it up, fill up your keg right to the top and leave it for 24 hours and it will bleach and it will make it all lovely, clean and white. And uh, if you're using it on bottles, it make them absolutely lovely and sparkling. Okay, so you can use it as a cleaner steriliser by making up a litre of it with a teaspoon, covering it around all surfaces, and then you need to rinse it off with cold tap water, um, and then it's ready to go. It can leave a chlorine-y um, aroma, in which case you can make up a, um, weak solution of sodium metabisulfate, swish that around, and that will get rid of the chlorine uh, contaminants from that as well, easy as that. Um, I did forget to say though, sodium metabisulfate, once you've used it, you need to rinse that one as well. So both of these need rinsing after you've sterilized with them. Okay, so then we've got this one here in a bottle called Chemsan. This is the only liquid one we've got, and this is acid-based. Uh, phosphoric acid, it's really, really um, concentrated. If you get this on your skin, it will cause you burns. It is um, dangerous and it has to be respected. You actually use this diluted um, and it's a very, very, very weak solution. I think it's something along the lines of, off the top of my head, um, about um, one or two and a half mil per, um, per 
litre. It's very, very, very small. What does it say? Um, 10 mil to 5 litres. There we go. Just to confirm that. Okay, and this kills yeast, it kills bacteria, and the way it does that is because it's an acid and it gets in there and it goes, you're going to die. Um, the good thing about this is it's no need to be rinsed, so very, very good if you're getting into lots and lots of um, barrels, kegs, bottles, you can use it as a spray, you can use it as a wipe, you can put a solution in there and swish it all around. Um, it's very, very versatile. Um, the only thing is, once you've used it, for it to be fully effective, it has to be left to fully dry. And then, once it's fully dry, you've got about an hour um, to actually use it, uh, that, that um, product that you're going to be using, whether it be a bucket, a spoon. Once it's fully dry, you've got about an hour um, before it starts potentially becoming contaminated again. Okay. Um, so very, very good, very, very useful. As I said, the only con on this one is that it is a very concentrated, dangerous acid in its raw form like this. So just be aware. The last one we've got is uh, this one, Shoresan. And Shoresan, again, is a no-rinse um, sterilizer. And this is basically a uh, peroxide-based cleaner sterilizer. The peroxide does the work of the sterilizing and it also um, when you mix it up with a small amount of water you'll see it start to bubble away, away when you coat all the surfaces um, so again uh, you just swish it all around leave it for 10 minutes make sure all the the surfaces are being wetted by it leave it for 10 minutes um, and then it's good to go um, again same as this one once it's dry is when you should be using it um, you can rinse it if you so wish to well, that's kind of against the no rinse sanitizer um, to use it quicker but again you should be leaving it to dry the con of this one is that um, if you leave it to dry it can leave a whitish film that's basically the uh, salts in here which are again non-toxic they're absolutely fine um, this breaks down into water oxygen and, and uh, a type of salt so nice and easy to use so there you go. You've got four different types of cleaners and sterilizers. If you've got um, really dirty um, buckets, barrels that you really want to clean, then you're either going to be looking at the shore sand because the peroxide gets to work on that and the oxygen bubbles cause it to lift off the surface. Um, or you've got your, um, let's call them uh, chlorine-based sterilizers because they smell chlorine um, and those guys there uh, one other big tip not to use is i see a lot of on the forums of people saying oh can i use milton tablets no uh, well you can um, but the bad downside of milton tablets is that it can react with chemicals in the fermentation you're making and it can create really soapy flavors like you literally just put a bar of soap in your mouth so milton I would advise against of, um, but go for a cleaner and sterilizer that is meant for brewing and home brew. But there you go, those are the different ones. I will make some videos on each one style and each individual product, showing you how to use it in various different circumstances so you can get a better idea. And down in the comments below, sorry, down in the um, description below, you'll find all the links to those videos. So go and watch them um, based on the cleaner sterilizer that you want to use. Um, if you've got any questions or any comments, you know what to do down in the comments below, put them in and then I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. But for now, happy sterilizing. <laughs>